Swati Cup guys, Master Ace Ramirez here at Crew Training Headquarters along with Coach Giancarlo. And today we're going to be going over our tip of the week which happens to be Helmet Guard. Uh, helmet Guard is a combination block which you've all seen uh, two hands up, a double pillar, or you might have seen one handed block. This is a combination. A lot of times when someone's throwing a, a hook, for example, you might hook on one side and block and block on the other side and what I've seen a lot of students doing is they block on one side and automatically the other hand drops and then you block on the other side then the other hand drops. This is kind of to illustrate that when one, you're blocking on one side the other hand is still going to be able to protect but you don't have both elbows down or both elbows up so we're going to show this in this particular example. Uh, so we're going to be using it if we see a little bit of overboxing, I say overboxing so someone's overloading you with a lot of high line boxing techniques and we could use this as an entry for our clinch. So as we face our opponent, uh, if he was doing a normal single jab, we may use as a defense just a single hand parry. We may even be able to catch it or if he was doing a jab cross, I may actually put both hands up and start using hard blocking. If he was doing this over and over again, such as a jab, cross, jab, cross, I may change from one transition of a parry or a catch and go into my hard block. So this is what it would look like again. I'm blocking, all of a sudden I see that he's doing more and I cover. All of a sudden he decides to go around my front block with his own hook. Now, I have to explain a couple different things. Uh, Depending on the style of the art, people throw their hooks a little bit differently. In Western boxing, it's a very tight styled hook. In Muay Thai, or specifically the way we do it in crew Muay Thai, it might be a little bit of a wider hook. Specifically, the reason that we do the wider hook is to avoid that clinch. But let's assume that they're doing more of a, a Western boxing style. So we start again with the straight punches. And I might have started going back in this position. Now, I'm noticing that they have a decent amount of power, so I start to hard block. At this point, he decides to throw the hook. I can still see in between my block and I transition my elbow to go a little bit higher. Now, if you notice the name of the helmet guard, you actually have one up and one down, pretty similar to how a football helmet would look um, in America. So you basically have the hard shell at the top and you also have the front guard uh, protecting the front of the face. So that's what we're trying to do. Another th consideration that you want to have with this is if someone was to do a western style boxing hook which is very tight, he would actually have to come in very close. So having the elbow up as opposed to the elbow down would have him run into my elbow so therefore my block actually turns into a, uh, a built in attack or counter attack. So we have built in defense um, based on any kind of action that we're going to use. Anytime that I'm not in my guard whether I'm throwing or I'm catching or I'm doing some other technique, that's making me vulnerable to any other hit. So here I'm trying to make sure that I'm covering on the high line, I'm having a built-in defense so that they can counterattack. And this is why in our crew Muay Thai program, we want to have a little bit of a wider hook. Therefore, if he throws that hook and I have my hand up and my elbow pointed, he is still clear and safe from the counter as opposed to something a little bit tighter. And I'm right here, he may actually run right into the elbow. Now, what happens after that? He's doing his straight punching and I could drill it with my students to go from a parry or a catch. Then all of a sudden it's a little bit more penetrating. Now on the timing, I have to have him throw his hook. I see it, then I make my transition making sure I don't drop my other hand. Once I'm in this position, I have certain things um, appearing right in front of me. I personally like to teach to go right after that bicep, but other people will choose to go to the neck. Now, let's investigate that. When he throws that hook and I'm in my helmet guard, if my timing is correct, if I put my hand over to the bicep, I have one option where the thumb is down and I can go right over to the neck. If you're a taller opponent, I can go right to the top of the head or back of the head, depending on the way that I can reach. Or in some cases, as he hooks, I want to be able to capture this bicep with a C hand, other hand is capturing the head, and therefore I can be able to manipulate a little bit of a turn. Personally I like doing that because I assume that the other person is stronger than me. So if I was here and I just decided to grab, clinch, he may block or if I try and pull him down he maintains a high posture so he's nice and high. I don't have that. So I actually choose that off of this helmet, head, I'm going to drive my elbow up while I turn down. We're not doing a simple circle. The elbow that is up drives forward the hand behind the head 
drives around, therefore causing a lack of balance. So if he was going to throw that hook one more time, touch, bicep, tricep, back of the head, drive, circle, turn, and now I'm in position for my knee strike. If my opponent stays right there and we recreate the same thing, he's going to be striking, and then I'm going to be looking for the hook, so I might go from here, hook, I recognize it, I capture the arm, I go to the head, I take a step, wherever that hook side was, I take the step, I drag my rear foot, now I'm, I'm in a much better position, because even if he has a strong uh, back and neck, I could be able to pull him down from that turn. So in today's tip of the week, we are really covering the helmet guard and applications of where to use it. As a quick review, we're having it that uh, we have an opponent who's using a lot of boxing or overboxing, being aware that if I plug up that front line that they're going to wind up reaching around. Once they reach around, I'll create my helmet guard, have the elbow up. Now that that el elbow is out, I can be able to capture onto the bicep and tricep and work any kind of clinch techniques. Look forward for any of the uh, tips of the week in the future on what to do within the clinch. And while you practice this at home, even though the left hook is probably going to be the most popular, he can still be able to do the technique, punching, but maybe it's a right hook this time. And because I can see everything, I can now practice, am I going to be guarding on the left side or onto the right side? Thank you very much, and I hope this tip helps. Cup and cup.